All right, so we talked about the best decks in the meta. It's only fitting we cover the rogue ones as well. The underdogs, the ones that catch you off guard, and sometimes can even topple the best of them. I'm super hyped to get into today's video, but before we do, we have a giveaway announcement to make. So let's do that. I'm going to be giving away two Sleeve Chief products, well, four actually, two deck boxes, and alongside them is going to be two packs of sleeves. Is the Prosperity deck box, the Uchiha's Wrath deck box, Sky Striker sleeves, and the fire border sleeves. And why it is Steve Chief themed is because Steve Chief is actually celebrating their anniversary slash birthday. So I will be giving this away on the 12th of May. This is when I'll be choosing the winner because this is when their discounts start. They have 20% off off of everything site-wide. They're going to be releasing amazing new products. I'll have pictures for you up on the screen. It's going to be awesome. You can also use my code Chato for additional 5% off. And to enter into this giveaway, all you have to do is make sure you are subscribed, like the video, and also make sure to let me know which deck box you want to be entered for. So good luck with that. Like I said, I'm going to be choosing the winner on the 12th of May, but please keep an eye out for their amazing product releases so you can snatch some really nice accessories. But before we hop into it, I also have another announcement to make. I will be doing the Diabil Star the Black Witch cosplay very, very soon on my OnlyFans. So if you're interested in that or the Ray cosplay, Dark Magician, girl cosplay or any exclusive custom request you come up with make sure to check me out on there join me on there and message me and we'll work something out i think you know you're gonna be able to find some really cool things on there so if you're interested my links are always in the description box but i'm so hyped about the diabel star cosplay as soon as i assemble it i will be showcasing on the channel as well so yeah you know i love it i love dressing up and i just feel really great in all of these cosplays so if you want to join me on that journey um you know my OnlyFans link is down there. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Let me know your thoughts. We have like literally a hundred decks or something to cover. So if you're playing any of these, if you're theorizing any of this, I would love to know. I'm personally not testing every single one of these decks, but I do have an idea and a grasp about like what they do and how they position in the meta. But if you have any intricacies or cool plays or combos that you want to let me know about, I would love to read about that in the comments. So let us hop into it. There's a lot of decks to go through. <laughs> so the first one is going to be ABC. It's just a locals type deck. It is really cool, but it got power crept. It's pretty much it. Now moving on to Adamantia. I think Adamantia is kind of decent, but like even though they have like Kakimato Guardian, which is helping you play through at least one hand trap, it's not enough because we're playing a gazillion of them right now. So I think it's only a locals contender for now. Moving on to Altergeist, I think this is decent. It is a, it is an okay deck. Like, I kind of bashed Altergeist. I think it was a, the last video I did, I'm not certain, but I kind of said, like, you know, it only puts up one bounce because this is usually what Geist has been doing, but apparently it does way more than that. So if you're playing Altergeist, let me know if you agree or disagree with me putting it in decent. I think it's fine. It's not Labyrinth, you know, in terms of being a good trap deck, but it's okay. It is Geist, but it lost Linkuribo, which is actually quite important. So let's move on. Ancient Gear. I wanted to include it because obviously this tier list is post Legacy of Destruction and we stand Crowler. He's like one of my... They, of course, are like one of my favorite characters. And um, yes, I just, I, I adore, I adore them. So let us talk about Ancient Gear. I think it's like... It could go in Hidden Potential because it's really interesting and it has like very dope combos actually, but I'm not certain how many people are actually gonna pick it up and try to make it work. So I think I'll put it in Locals. I think this is best. <laughs> like it is really, really cool. Like the support is actually really decent. So if you're dabbling into, you know, Ancient Gear stuff, let me know your thoughts. Ashent is like, I don't know. I think it's decent. It is not a terrible deck, but I don't, mm -hmm, uh, you know, <laughs> let's move on to Bird Up. I think this is like, it's a decent deck, I guess, but um, actually no, let's put it into locals. I, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's that great. Also like 
the amount of hand traps right now, like you are not resolving your effect to link. Like you're, you're just not. It's not. It's not happening. And I know that uh, these decks do benefit from playing cards like Droplet, for example, where you get to, you know, remove the body or like I don't know stuff like enemy controller or something. So what you have to do against those decks is you have got to Veiler slash Imperm slash whatever on summon. This was like always the play against this deck. So while people are still doing that, I don't think this deck is gonna be that great. Let's move on to Blackwing. Now, I wanna put it in Hidden Potential. I could be wrong, but I think I remember this deck topping a couple weeks back. I don't know. Maybe I just saw this deck profile in like a fever dream, but I think Blackwing actually topped. So let's put it in Hidden Potential. I think this deck is actually quite strong. Like it's always been strong and it, it can catch you off guard so quickly. And also like a lot of times hand traps are gonna hurt it, but I've never encountered like a Blackwing player where one hand trap would completely stop them because it's one of those decks where you get a random special summon there and you get another random special summon there. And it's like, you get so many bodies that for a fact you're gonna able to at least end on something. So. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's it's okay in hidden potential. I don't know, I might be coping, but let us move on. The Brave Pio. So mm, I read a comment on the last Rogue Dice tier list where someone said they're trying to make the like the Synchro Pile work, but I'm not certain if they were talking about this, like the adventure stuff or not. I want to put this in decent. I don't think it's terrible, but it's like, I am not certain what you're ending on because I assume Baron was like quite a crucial part of your of your combo. So let me know what you think about that. But I think it's I think it's okay. Like the adventure stuff is always nice when it's included in a deck. So yeah, I'll put um why did I just black out on the name? <laughs> I will put Burning Abyss in the bread tier. I'm really sorry, but you know, Burning Abyss, in my opinion was at its peak in like 2019 was it i think with like orbital hydra lander and it was just really cool it was such a dope deck and it's not that anymore unfortunately so let's leave it in bra also i did not include dragonling in my last tier list because <laughs> i don't know i think i kind of convinced myself it's uh not a rogue deck i don't know why i just i love it so much i could not admit to myself that it is a rogue deck in fact so yes let's fix my mistake it is included in the tier list this time i think i will put it <laughs> then just watch me put it in meta and be like okay with it no i'll put it in hidden potential because it is hidden potential because let, let's let's be honest with ourselves if i see a topping deck profile like tomorrow for example dragon link i will be super hyped and i think it's gonna be kind of an underdog type moment because Yes, you only lost Savage and, you know, Baron, but, like, <laughs> that actually hurts. Like, I don't know how you're playing Dragon Link, but I think this is, like, an actually significant hit. And Dragon Link is gonna work best in, like, a mid rangey type format, just like he did, like, a couple months back, like, quite a few months back. But right now, things are so explosive. It's like you have to have so many hand traps to stop your opponents. And not every single deck is like a mid rangey deck, meaning that a deck that ends on like two interruptions to maybe three and then has a couple hand traps, I don't think it's going to be able to hang, if you know what I mean. So I don't know. This might be like a long and convoluted way of saying that I don't think Dragon Link is actually it right now. But if it does well, I wouldn't be that surprised because it still has Bishdios and everything that it's ending on and like Hieratic Seal and all of that. So I think it's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> the Bishdio deck with Horus, pretty much the same goes for this deck, actually. Like, I think it's fine. You still play like some Synchros, of course, uh, but the Resonator package is really strong. So... I'm fine. I'm fine with this deck in here. So Durian is meta in my opinion. Although it's like the lower portion of this tier, I think I think I will fit some decks on top of it because Centurion is like, it gets severely hurt by Ghost Ogre, but what it has going for it is the fact that it can play Shifter right now and really rearrange their grave in, in a way where they can just abuse Shifter, which is great for them, bad for the rest of us. <laughs> but yeah, I think Centurion is fine. Uh, Crystal Beast is like... 
decent. I think it's a decent deck. That's pretty much it. Uh, Cyber Dragon is not it, and <laughs> Dark Magician can just go in bra. Uh, Dark World is interesting. Did a Dark World deck just top recently? Because I think it did. So I want to put it in Hidden Potential. Look, this deck is like, I always say that it gets hurt by, you know, Shifter and Droll and Yubiru a lot of times, Bishio, stuff like that. And it's not topping a lot. And that's why I want to put it in Hidden Potential. But still, it's a deck that's able to spam out so many bodies. And actually, I always kind of said that it's not a deck that takes a lot of skill to pilot, but I do take this back. I think you have to do some really cool maneuvers also, if you're playing like with dangers and you're drawing into things, like you don't know what you're drawing into, and then you have to kind of, I guess, um, react on the spot and decide what you want to do. So I think it's fine in hidden potential. Let us move on to DDD. I think this deck is like a low cost type deck. Let's put it like next to Adamantia. Again, like I always say, DDD, and also if I can find it, if I can locate it in here, DDD and Ninja are those two decks where they take so much IQ to play, but they don't really end on anything. <laughs> it's kind of like you can deal with their boards, right? But they're really tough to pilot. So I think I'll just put both of them in decent. Dino is like, excuse me, in Locos. Uh, Dino is fine, but I'll just put it in low cost. I honestly don't see Dino doing well anywhere, so I think it's just cope at this point if I put it in decent. Uh, Dinomorphia is interesting. I'll just put it in hidden potential because uh, Dinomorphia is also like sometimes just an engine. You know, you will see things paired together that also feature Dinomorphia, but it's not always a separate deck. So I think it's actually really strong with Rex Germ and all of that. Like, it's annoying to deal with that card. It is. And um, a lot of times you're going to see a random Dynamorphia deck profile, you know, topping and you're like, oh yeah, I, I guess I can see that. But it's not that insane. It's not consistently doing well. So I think it's fair to put it in hidden potential. <sighs> okay, let's address the pendulum decks. Okay, <laughs> I think when it comes to pendulum decks, let me find it. Melodious... 100% meta. Like, it's actually really nice. Melodious Pure and Melodious with Snake Eye, both versions are really interesting. They are ending on very decent boards. They're playing around hand traps. They're, you know, they have the surprise factor going for them. It's all great. But when it comes to the other Pendulum decks, they are not that amazing because they cannot play through hand traps that effectively. They do not have Electromite, which is, that's actually it. Like, they don't have Electromite. <laughs> It's just what's up. So <laughs> I think I want to put those decks into low cost. And that's going to be Draco Slayer, which is like, let's put it a little higher. Draco Slayer is fine. I've really enjoyed playing Draco Slayer. And I am not biased, I swear. <laughs> so let's put it here. And then we also have like, uh, where is it? Where is it? I guess Magic Spectre. I think Magic Spectre is actually like decent because of unicorn i think it's interesting i'm pretty sure it can catch a lot of people off guard actually and i do have like a random supreme king yeah this let's put it next to draco slayer <laughs> maybe a little higher actually it's interesting it's like um one of those decks one of those pendulum decks where it puts up like 10 interruptions and you're just like okay you know i already died when you you know activated your second interruption i'm just scooping at this point but then you usually win the match because it's pendulum so even if they can take a game they usually cannot take a match it's pretty much it okay let's move on to dragon maid now i saw dragon maid as an engine i'm putting it in bro by the way i just don't think this deck is actually real but i did see it as an engine in paleo which was interesting it's actually really cool. Like the, I'm not sure what, what it's called. Is it like the washer washing so something, the dragon maid basically, uh, that also gets played alongside the trap card uh, in the Paleo deck that just did well a couple of days ago. I cannot see Paleo. Okay, Paleo. Okay, I will, I will put this in at the top of Hidden Potential. Uh, you know, Dragon Maid, again, is not a deck in my opinion, but Dragon Maid as an engine in Paleo is interesting. And Paleo as a deck, it's actually really cool. Now, I do think it has a lot to do with the fact that people just don't know that you have got to chain block Paleos. And it's like, they activate something and then they look at you and you're just like, yeah, cool, that's fine. 
and then they go, oh, Paleo Engrave? And it's like, you could have done something to prevent this. I'm 100% certain, but the ones that didn't play back then don't really know. So I think the more this deck becomes popular, people are going to realize what to do against it. Uh, the thing that it has, that it doesn't have going for it, I should say, is the fact that it is extremely slow. So you're, you know, you're not that happy going into like a competitive tournament, or you're knowing you're going to be going into time. You do play time cards, but that's not the point. So yes, I think it has to go in hidden potential because it just keeps doing well here and there. And it does take a lot of skill to pilot, but that's pretty much it. Like, I don't think it's an actual meta threat, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, let's speed things up a little bit because I think I'm taking quite a lot of time explaining some of these decks. If you enjoy, of course, thank you for still sticking around. Like the video, let me know your thoughts and let's move on to Drytron. I think Drytron is decent. This deck is always decent. It's fine. It cannot play that many hand traps, so it's not at the top of the meta right now. But when there's a meta with a lot of board breakers, this deck is going to be much better. Earth Machine is um, a local type deck in my opinion. Outlitch is actually not real and it's so funny to think that we actually were afraid of this deck at one point. Like Zodiac Outlitch was so cool. I literally get nostalgic thinking about Zodiac Outlitch. I played it at the remote duo, I guess, era <laughs> of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, Evil Eye is a local type deck in my opinion. It's fine. It can actually go a little higher. Uh, just because I've actually seen, um, I have seen it top. Have I seen it top? I think I have. Actually, let's put this in decent. And I'm interested to see if it keeps doing well. Exosister um, is fine. It's decent, but, you know, the barriers in the format. So that's all I have to say, I think. Also, some of these Fire King variants, they're fine, but they are budget and they don't function as well as like the Snake Eye stuff, the other Fire King version, etc. So I think it's fair to just put it in decent. Uh, Flunder is 100% meta. I'll maybe put it even below Melodious. I don't think it matters that much, but Flunder is really, really nice. Uh, Godi is um, probably decent. I think it's fine. Godi is okay. Uh, Goblin Bikers are a local type deck, 100%. They can do quite well at locals, in my opinion. So let's put it fairly high, but I just don't think, you know, they're really it. Uh, Gold Pride is like somewhere in here in the low cost category. Also fine, but can be dealt with fairly easily. Now, heroes have got to go at the top of Hidden Potential. They just topped recently and they are, they're actually so decent at OTKing. They're really, really nice. And um, they are able to play through a lot, actually. Like when you look at a hero hand, it's like, they literally play five extenders or like a one starter and, you know, a couple extenders, maybe a couple hand traps. So they stop you and then they go off. It's like, you know, in Dark Claw, it's nice. It's nothing to be made fun of. So I think it's um, quite a decent deck, actually. Horus Sun is pretty much meta, in my opinion. I think it's very, very decent. Um, Attic Nister is okay. It's, it's, it's fine, but it's just that... Um, if you want to play a deck that plays a lot of hand traps and has one card starters and a very solid engine, I would gravitate towards Melodious because it's just better at playing through stuff and better into the format as a whole. But that doesn't take away from decks like, you know, Adignister, Marinces as well. Like this is an okay deck, but it's just worse than Melodious. It's pretty much what it is. Also, Solomon Grid is another one of those decks. Where can I? Okay. Oh, which I actually think it's probably has to go at the top of hidden potential because it can possibly slip into the meta tier if it keeps doing well because we do see a top from time to time uh let's move on to infernoble yeah i think this has to go in low cost like infernoble is literally not doing anything right now of course we kind of expected this but still people tried to make it work for like two days and then they just didn't anymore <laughs> and then we have invoked which is like i don't know invoked is a decent deck i think it's fine we can put it like mm, here i guess labyrinth is meta 100 let's put it next to next to flunder i guess uh really really nice I, it's not gonna have the easiest matchup against tempai dragon but with all the trap cards it's able to play i think it will be okay uh also it's like one of those decks that 
you know, the second people start to prepare for it much, much more, it's going to be tougher for this deck to compete. But at this point, we are all so focused on beating Snake Eye, Tempai Dragon, possibly also Branded, which I guess Ash works, you know, against Labyrinth and Branded. But still, you cannot possibly fit side cards or I guess tech cards in your main and side deck to counter every single deck. So it's going to be a little more tough to go up against a deck like this, which we specifically need like Ghost Bell, you know, against it and stuff like that. But the card is not that amazing. So I don't actually see it a whole lot. And immediately this deck is going to have better chances because people just would not have the physical space to side for it as much as they would maybe want to and need to. It's going to depend on which event you go to. Of course, if you expect a lot of Labyrinths, of course, you're going to prepare for it. Okay, let's move on to Lightsworn. I want to put this at the top of Hidden Potential. I think the support is so, so nice. It is so good. I've seen the Lightsworn runic version, which is looking kind of nice. I think it's really cool, actually. So I'm super hyped to see how this deck is able to perform. Like, like I said, the support is really solid. I love that the support actually addressed the core issues of the Lightsworn deck, which is Drawing Wolf. <laughs> for the most part so you can deal with that you can put stuff you know on the top of your deck mill it get pluses off of it it is just so it, it's wholesome right it just functions well together and that's amazing let's move on to madolce i think madolce is decent it's a f it's an okay deck a magical musketeer not that amazing unfortunately grand Maju is like just a basic locals type deck in my opinion <laughs> Math Mac has got to go and like bruh somewhere in bruh Mac Knight is not real now Memento or Memento Tlan or however you want to call it is actually interesting I will put it in hidden potential and let's put it somewhere here maybe because I genuinely think if you try and make this deck work I think it could be really su successful I think it's actually topping here and there as well so yeah, pretty much what this deck, I've looked into it a bit and it's it's like, it has really good recursion, which is amazing. And it actually has like a lot of interruptions when it puts up the end board, it's able to fusion during your turn, like the opponent's turn. And um, it has a lot of monster negation as well. It's able to utilize IP to go into whatever you want. It's like, it's it has versatility, it has recursion and it has extenders, which is pretty much all you want a deck to have. And I think it's kind of decent. Now, Mermeo is a deck you would encounter at locals, in my opinion. Uh, Mikanko as well, but it is a little better, so I think it's fair to put it in somewhere indecent, probably. We can put this a tiny bit lower. Monarchs, also a stun type deck, I think are actually fine. Very similarly to all the stun decks we're seeing right now, so I want to put them fairly high, actually. You know, if we had a European YCS, which is like a I don't know, a fairy tale at this point. I assume Lithium will be taking this deck and maybe doing well, so there's that. Orcus is actually, like, somewhere towards the top of Hidden Potential. It's, you know, there's so many variants you can play with Orcus. It's Orcus with Horus and Orcus with Sky Striker, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. Those would be, like, the only two versions that actually do really well, but you can play either, so that's really nice. And Harp to 3 is amazing. You can also play it finally almost a full full power pretty much together with Girsu as well which was never a thing so that is hyping me up now plunder also hidden potential in my opinion there's a lot of hidden potential decks that can actually like do well we saw plunder runic you know uh, go to like a top cut finish at a ycs which is amazing and uh plunder with runic is just a match made in heaven pretty much i think it's, it's really really cool okay let us move on to phantom knights I think this is like the best representative of a local type deck. This is something you would encounter and you kind of are annoyed to deal with it, but then you deal with it. It's pretty much it, I think. Sprite variants are hidden potential 100%. Like I kind of, like I want to put Paleo just a tiny bit lower. The rest is fine. I think this could go a little lower and then we can put Sprite a little higher because I actually think Sprite in almost any variant is really really nice so we can put actually no let's put this at, at the bottom of meta i think this is fine and we can put centurion a little lower um any variant do i have sprite with melfi on here i don't think i do but sprite with melfi sprite with like cyberish or something like that i also saw a sprite with runic 
I think is also fine. So pretty much anything you want to do with Sprite, you can do. And I also think we have Tri Brigade Sprite somewhere in here. So let's slap it in Hidden Potential, I guess, for just for the lords. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> let's move on to Raid Raptor. I think this deck is also Hidden Potential. I kind of, you know, people kind of stopped playing Raid Raptor, I think, but it's still fine in my opinion. So yes, uh, Raika is probably hidden potential. I will put it at the bottom at this point because I haven't really seen any topping plant stuff, but Raika or Rika or a combination or like just look into everything that Jessica Robinson is doing. Look into the in-depth like guide, the plant guide, uh, and I think it should be fine. <laughs> you know, I think these both of these decks or a mixture of, of both of them is definitely hidden potential. Resonator is like, just as pure, I don't think it's that great, but as an engine, it's much, much better. So I'll put it somewhere in locals, I guess. Stun is actually amazing. Like Stun is so strong at this point. Like I want to put it high, high, high. <laughs> Runic with Amano Evato and the floodgates and, and the rest is like, we have to respect it. That's, that's just what's up. It is stun. It is annoying, but it's here to stay at least for the foreseeable future. Okay. Uh, this is runic, <laughs> obviously. Uh, runic with variants. So I'm, I, I probably should have taken this icon out, but I guess we can talk about like runic generator and runic earthbound and runic Godi and stuff like that. If you're trying to make a deck work with Runic, I think that's fine, but the superior Runic deck right now would be the stun version. So I hope this makes sense. I would put it somewhere in decent. Scareclaw, I think is also like an actually decent deck. Shark as well, it's fine. Look, I want to put Ashen a little lower. I don't know why it's doing that high, to be honest with you, but we can put it maybe like above Drytron and the Pyo deck and the rest, and Ultra Guys is a little high, if I'm honest, so let's put it a little lower. Mm, but I think this is fine. Like, I guess Sharks are topping a little more than Madolce at this point, but we could do it like, like this, maybe. Super Heavy is, you know, it got severely hurt by the lack of Baron, so I don't really see this deck anywhere, but it's like, it's fine like even without baron i feel like this deck is not that terrible people just don't really want to pick it up for some reason so let's put it next to inferno why i guess both decks they kind of took an out in recent months okay look I, pu I put rescue ace in rogue in my rogue next tier list i think it's i think we have to admit to ourselves we have to put it like uh here maybe. It is still meta, question mark, question mark, question mark, but it has to be part of the stroke next tier list. It is not at the power level of Snake Eye, but it does have a very, very, very solid engine with a lot of bricks, which is terrible, but Turbulence is amazing. So look, I just really enjoy playing this deck, but then I break and I just get very sad. So, <laughs> you know, it's as if I want to torture myself, but I still think it's a, an okay meta contender. Sky Striker, in my opinion, actually has to go in hidden potential. Uh, like going second Sky Striker or Sky Striker with Snake Eye or with Orcus, any of the sort, you know, engage to draw is <laughs> actually amazing. It is so strong. And with three upstart and also... um. Ben from like at the Berlin regional played one into the void, which is also not a three, which, which is like why, but that doesn't matter. Um, you can play a lot of these cards that will for a fact put a spell card in your graveyard. So you can almost always draw with engage and go plus one as well. So that's awesome. Let's move on to spring guns. Uh, locals type deck, I think. I think it's fine. It's just that it's not that explored, I think. Spyro, unfortunately, is bro at this point. Guru is also like, it's very similar to like Burning Abyss or like Dragon Maid. It's doing stuff, but it's not doing enough. Uh, Sword So probably has to go um, somewhere towards the top of Decent. It's okay, but it's like, uh, it lost Baron, which actually hurts quite a lot. Um, TG is interesting. I want to put it in Decent, actually. Yeah, like I, get, I, I think it gets... Um, again, underexplored. It doesn't get a lot of love with all the decks being available. Like, I don't think a lot of people are going to gravitate towards TG. Uh, Thunder Dragon. Look. I don't know where to place this deck because it's not that great. And I think we all have got to accept this. 
I will put it in low cost. I don't, I don't think it can go higher than that. I'm really, really sorry. But if you just want to run it as an engine, sure, this makes sense. But other than that, I don't think so. <laughs> Tistina is probably, bro like, honestly, what are you doing with Tistina? And I know people get triggered, but it's like, what does this deck even do? Like, let me know. Please, let me know. <laughs> Let's move on to Trap Tricks. I think this deck is fine. It's like, um... It's okay. We can put it, like, uh, next to Geist, maybe? I think this is fine. And we, we could possibly, potentially, slap a couple of these decks in. Uh, locals. This can go into locals. This can go into locals. This can go into locals. <laughs> All of this can actually go into locals, I think. I think it's better that way. Yes. Why is guys that high? I just, I don't want to beef with the Alter Guys community anymore. So <laughs> that's why I keep it indecent. Okay, let's move on to Unchained. I think Unchained is actually kind of nice. I want to put it at the bottom of meta. I I'm not seeing a lot of people have that many like high hopes for Unchained, but I genuinely think Unchained with your belt is not bad at all. You can take it to like a regional and do fairly well, in my opinion. So I will put both of these decks here into the, um, into the meta category and vanquish soul as well i think vanquish soul is also kind of nice actually and shifter is like hard carrying that deck and when you open raisin you're off to the races so yes no pun intended you're off to the race i'm not even gonna try and do a pun with that okay <laughs> let's move on to virtual world at this point because i'm getting cringy so um i think this is like it's actually kind of decent Let's put it next to the, the other, I guess, pile with Synchro Monsters. It's fine. And Shenshin is still kind of annoying to deal with. Volcanic is like... Mm, Locust type deck, probably. Yeah, you could potentially encounter this at Locust. Weather Painter is probably bruh, as is World Chalice, and as are Zombies and Zodiac. So, yes. I think this is what the Dunes is supposed to look like. If you agree or disagree, of course, feel free to share your opinions. And uh, you kind of have to, because if you want to enter into the giveaway, you have to comment something. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know which deck box you're entering for. Keep an eye out for the 12th of May, because Steve Chief just has so many products coming out. If you're interested in more specific, exclusive, the Abel Star type stuff, Feel free to sub to my OnlyFans as well if you want. So with that, we're going to end today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Give it a like and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.